Welcome to PM Movie Recaps. Today's pick is a drama and thriller of 2006, Blood Diamond. If you're ready, let's enjoy the video. In 1999 a local fisherman Solomon Vandy is living with his family in Sierra Leone. Solomon is walking with his son Dia. When suddenly, groups of the Revolutionary United Front or UF rebels attack his village. His wife, Jesse and his family escape. But Solomon is captured by the rebels. All the surviving men and young boys are rounded up. The leader of the rebels, Captain Poison claims that no hands means no voting. Luckily Solomon is allowed to keep his hands. But he is taken away to work in the diamond mines. Some men are talking about how diamonds are mined and sold to fund civil wars. Vanda Kappa big time diamond importer is there. Elsewhere, Captain Poison watches captured men searching for diamonds. A man finds a diamond and tries to hide it in his mouth but is then shot by the captain. Sometime later Danny Archer, a South African smuggler and ex-soldier meets Commander Zero, who pays them in diamonds. Later, Danny poses as a photographer and is stopped by soldiers who find the hidden diamonds. He tries to bribe the soldiers and says he's good friends with Colonel Kotsia. But it doesn't work and he's arrested. In the diamond mines, Solomon finds a giant pink diamond. He then secretly hides it between his toes and sneaks off to bury it. Captain Poison finds him, but as he does, the army attacks and the captain is hurt. Solomon buries the diamond just before he is captured and taken to jail. Later in the prison we see Danny, Solomon and the injured Captain Poison, who asks Solomon where the diamond is. It's the biggest diamond he's ever seen. Danny listens to them talk as the captain is taken away. Danny is eventually set free and makes a plan to get Solomon out of jail. The plan works. Now Danny and Solomon are both free. Some time passes and Danny meets Maddie Bowen, a pretty woman at a beach side bar. They talk and flirt and she asks if he's a smuggler. Danny replies he is a soldier of fortune and laughs. Danny learns that she's a journalist. When she asks for information on smuggling and Vanda Kopp, he tells her to get lost and walks off. Elsewhere, Dia is found and taken away by the RUF rebels. Danny flies to Cape Town and is brought to see Colonel Kotsia. The colonel is being hired to kill the rebels and he knows Danny is looking for the big diamond. Somehow Danny tracks down Solomon. Dia and other young boys are beaten by RUF rebels. The children are being brainwashed and turned into child soldiers. Dia is blindfolded and forced to kill a young man. Soon after Captain Poison makes him a captain in his child army. At night Danny gets a gun from the beachside bar and bumps into Maddie again. They dance and start to flirt, but things get awkward and she leaves. The next day, army soldiers patrol the streets and things start to get crazy. As Danny talks with Solomon about the diamond again. Danny tells Solomon he got him out of jail and says he'll help him find his family. Suddenly RUF attacks the city and Danny and Solomon run for their lives. People are dying everywhere as Danny and Solomon run through the street. Danny and Solomon take cover as the fighting continues. They hide in an old building and Danny watches as the ALF execute the army soldiers. Somehow Danny and Solomon escape, and the next morning we see them trying to cross a bridge. The bridge is guarded by RUF, so Danny pretends to be Solomon's prisoner and shoots the guards. Solomon looks shocked as he sees how good Danny is with a gun. Sometime later Danny and Solomon make their way to a base camp. Danny pretends to be a reporter and meets a cool-looking guy with a camera. He asks if he knows Maddie and says he has the story she's looking for. Maddie arrives soon after and Danny says he has information on Vanda Cop, but Maddie has to help Solomon find his family. She knows Danny is using Solomon but agrees to help anyway. Later, Maddie tells Solomon she's found his family. They walk to a massive refugee camp and Maddie gives a soldier paper with the names of Solomon's family. Maddie takes photos through the fence as Solomon scans the groups for his family. There are people everywhere, but Solomon spots his wife and family. They run to the fence and hold hands, as Jesse tells him Dio was taken by the RUF. Solomon screams as soldiers hit him through the fence. Solomon is sad as his family will not be released until the war is over and he tells Danny the diamond is buried nearby. Solomon looks depressed as he talks to Danny about his son and Danny goes to talk with Maddie. She argues with them and says people back home wouldn't buy a diamond ring if they knew it cost someone else their hand. Danny asks her to help them get to Kono. He'll be a journalist and Solomon will be the cameraman. When she says no, Danny starts to tell her how the diamonds are smuggled and moved around different countries. Vanda Kopp knows all about it and controls the market prices of diamonds. Danny shows Maddie a book with names, dates and bank accounts to help her story. His life is in her hands. Soon after Danny, Maddie and Solomon get on a bus full of journalists and they head off to Kono. They have an army escort and they stop when they find an ambushed group of people on the side of the road. Suddenly they are attacked by the RUF. 
Solomon gets into a car with Danny and everyone else. They drive away from the gunshots. At the RUF base child soldiers are given guns and take on cool names. Meanwhile, back in the car, the driver is shot and the journalists are attacked and killed. Danny kicks the body out of the car and tries to drive away from the RUF. They chase Danny until it crashes the car. Soon after Danny, Maddie and Solomon have escaped into the jungle where they are being watched by local militia. They are scary looking, but Maddie manages to talk to them. Ben runs a school and tries to help former child soldiers. The next day Ben is driving when he is shot. Danny and the others are in the car and quickly take them to Colonel Kotsia army base for help. At the army base Danny is told he has to join with the colonel and fight, and Maddie is told to evacuate. Danny gives Maddie the book to help her report and get some supplies. Maddie gives Danny her number and takes his photo before she gets on the plane. Soon after Danny and Solomon run off and go searching for the diamond. There is an RUF camp nearby. Danny and Solomon fight when Solomon tries to go off looking for Dia. Solomon screams at Danny and they stop fighting. While walking and talking about family, Danny tells Solomon if they find the diamond, he'll quit smoking. Later Solomon talks about peaceful times and how good his son is. Sometime later Danny and Solomon find the mining camp and Danny orders in an airstrike. That night Danny wakes up to find Solomon has gone down into the camp to look for Dia. Solomon sneaks around the camp and finds his son drinking and playing cards, but Dia calls him the enemy and pushes him away. Captain Poison captures Solomon and tells him he will find the diamond for him. If he doesn't the captain will find and kill his family. As the captain holds a knife to Dia's neck, the helicopters arrive and start their attack. We see Danny fighting the RUF as Colonel Kotsia and the helicopter destroys the mining camp. Solomon kills Captain Poison and Danny saves Dia. The Colonel lands and tells Solomon to find the diamond for him. He doesn't trust the Colonel, so Danny offers up Dia. He'll do anything to keep him safe. They walk off looking for the diamond and find a spot where men have already been digging. A few soldiers surround Solomon as he digs. Danny gets Solomon's trust back by saying it's about time he quit smoking. They trick the soldiers and Danny shoots the colonel. Danny is being shot and Solomon finds the diamond. Dia briefly holds the pair at gunpoint, but Vandy is able to talk him down by reminding him of who he was before his kidnapping. Pursued by vengeful mercenaries, Danny discloses he has been mortally wounded and entrusts the stone to Vandy, telling him to take it for his family. Vandy and his son rendezvous with Archer's pilot, who flies them to safety while Archer makes a final phone call to Maddie, who is in Cape Town. They share final farewells as he asks her to assist Vandy and his family, and he gives her permission to finish her article. Archer finally takes in the beautiful African landscape before dying. Vandy and Maddie meet in London, where they execute an undercover operation meant to expose the Vanda cop operation's dirty dealings. Vandy exchanges the pink diamond for £2 million and a reunion with his entire family. Maddie takes photographs of the exchange and publishes her article on the diamond trade and Vanda cop's criminal actions. Later, Vandy appears as a guest speaker at a conference on blood diamonds in Kimberley, where he is met with a standing ovation. Thank you for watching, but before leaving please make sure that you click subscribe and turn on the notification so that you can enjoy watching more videos like this.